I know there's a lot of confusion out there when it comes to the topic of a leaky gut. Therefore this video will address the following questions. What is a leaky gut? How does it affect our health? What causes it? How can we cure it? And how can we actually test for it? How can we find out that our gut is leaky? So let's look at the science and find out. According to Wikipedia, leaky gut is a proposed medical condition in alternative medicine for the phenomenon whereby the intestine wall exhibit excessive permeability. In other words, it describes a condition in which your gut cell wall becomes more leaky and suddenly things that aren't supposed to be there can enter your body. While there seems to be a lot of confusion out there on the term leaky gut, mostly everyone agrees on the fact that increased gut permeability is an actual thing and countless studies prove it. For simplicity's sake, let's just say that leaky gut equals increased intestinal permeability. So there's actually just one layer of cells that separates the trillions of microbes in your gut from your own body. And in a healthy individual, our gut cell wall has some permeability, which allows small nutrients to pass through, while at the same time providing a barrier for potentially harmful things like bacteria, toxins or antigens. The degree of permeability is regulated by so-called tight junctions in between our gut epithelial cells, which only allow small molecules with the size of about 1 nanometer to pass through, which is about 1000 times smaller than the average bacteria. However, under some conditions the permeability might increase, which allows entry to potentially harmful and definitely unwelcome substances. The immune system recognizes and eliminates those substances, thereby causing inflammation. Short and acute inflammation is not bad, you want to have it when you let's say cut yourself. But it can become very harmful if the cause of the inflammation remains and the inflammation then becomes chronic. To give you an idea what can happen, this is a list of diseases that have been associated with increased intestinal permeability and the subsequent chronic inflammation. When we talk about leaky gut, we also have to talk about the molecule lipopolysaccharide, or short LPS, which is found on the cell wall of gram-negative bacteria. LPS is for us what a cat is for a dog, it cannot help but attack it. Under normal conditions, LPS doesn't really get into contact with our immune system, except if we have a wound somewhere. LPS is about 50 times bigger than what normally passes your gut cell wall. But once your gut cell wall becomes leaky, it can flush in. We frequently use LPS in the laboratory to induce an immune reaction. LPS can literally be used to induce any kind of diseases, ranging from depression over multiple sclerosis to uh, Alzheimer's. A very interesting paper recently found that healthy centenarians had significantly lower blood LPS levels compared to unhealthy young controls. So keeping your gut wall tight might be a worthwhile attempt for longevity. Another study published in the journal Gut found that increased intestinal permeability correlates with high blood LPS levels and that people with depression have significantly higher levels of blood LPS. Now what actually causes leaky gut and how can we cure it? The first question is easier to answer. Research has shown us a number of things that can actually compromise the intestinal permeability. Here are the big ones. Antibiotics, stress, various medications including non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, a gut dysbiosis, which is a very big factor. Research also has shown us that gluten can increase the intestinal permeability and processed foods with many additives or artificial sweeteners should probably be avoided. And of course, alcohol. But I guess this is not a big surprise. Just for clarification, leaky gut is reversible and heavily depends on your microbiome and on your genetic predisposition. So what I'm getting at is that going out with friends and having a burger and a couple of beer won't cause any irreversible damage. Just don't make it a habit. Okay, can we treat leaky gut? Yes we can, but according to Dr. Fasano, the scientist who discovered the protein responsible for controlling gut permeability, the approach of fixing leaky gut is similar to fixing a broken car. You don't know the exact problem until the mechanic lifts the hood, looks around and tries different things. There's no simple direct approach to fixing these problems. 
It is the same with the key guard. We have to try different strategies and see what works. Having said this, there are some ways to fix the key guard, ranging from lifestyle changes like reducing your stress levels or changing your diet, and also food supplements can be helpful. However, probably the most important point is that you find out what foods actually cause an immune reaction and make your gut leaky and then eliminate those. Some of the most promising supplements in fixing leaky gut are probably prebiotics and probiotics. But also vitamin D, glutamine, digestive enzymes and bone broth seem to be very reasonable starting points in fixing leaky gut. In general, different dietary compounds can either cause or treat leaky gut. This review from 2015 summarized the impact of amino acids, vitamins, polyphenols and other compounds on gut permeability and found that for instance vitamin D decreases the permeability while ethanol increases it. Now this topic deserves a whole video by itself. So let me know in the comment section if you want me to dig into the scientific literature and see what actually works for most people. So if you are concerned that you have a leaky gut because you suffer from at least one of the symptoms I described earlier, there are at least in theory four different ways to test for it. The first one is the lactulose and mannitol test. And even though many experts have very different opinions on this, studies like this one shows that it actually works. It basically works like this, that you ingest two different kinds of indigestible sugar of different sizes. The smaller one can easily cross the gut cell wall, but in healthy individuals, the bigger sugar should stay inside the gut. This can then be measured in the urine. Only when the cell wall is leaky, the bigger sugar molecule will be found in the urine. Another more reliable test would be to check for markers for intestinal permeability in your blood. Commonly, one would check for sonolene, the protein that controls the leakiness of your gut, or for endotoxins like LPS. The third test would be to check for food sensitivities via an antibody-based test. So when your gut is leaky, undigested food compounds can enter your blood, where they are recognized by the immune system as like a harmful foreign substance, and this causes inflammation and the production of antibodies. And at least until you fix your gut, you should probably eliminate those foods, uh, food items from your diet. The last one would be to get your microbiome checked for something like a gut dysbiosis. However, since we do not yet entirely understand the microbiome, it might be a little bit tricky to make sense of your results, but this was, would definitely be a more targeted approach to fixing leaky gut. Again, this topic is extremely complex and there's no one-fits-all approach. So please let me know in the comment section if you have some specific questions to something I mentioned today. As always, you can find all the references on my blog. And please make sure to subscribe as next time we talk about how the microbiome affects our mood and look at some cases of depression. Thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>